I'm Therapy, and I'm from Myanmar. If you don't know where that is, it's right there beside Thailand. I see a few people in the audience nodding their heads like, yes, I'm planning to spend my gap year there to find myself. Well, Myanmar is a developing country. It's going through, and it has been through, a very difficult time of political turmoil. However, unfortunately, this political turmoil has received less attention from international media than other political turmoils. But just like any other country that's going through a tumultuous period, any form of assistance, whether it's a simple online donation or on the ground volunteering, it's all highly appreciated. Now, coming from a country that receives a lot of international aid, we have to understand that there are at least four parties in these transactions, the donor, the recipient, the middleman, and the authorities. So now, let's take this as an example. In 2020, I volunteered in a nonprofit. Now, this nonprofit worked on projects that focused on environmental sustainability and well-being. This was no small nonprofit. We were, we had projects that were funded by the World Bank, the European Union, Switch Asia, and many other organizations. And now, one of the projects that I worked on personally entailed of hand auditing waste in undocumented informal settlements in the outside outskirts of the commercial capital of Yangon. This was to conduct a plastic chain analysis to develop a communal waste management system. Now, communal waste management system. These settlements had no proper waste management system. This means that garbage, food waste, and everything else has piled up and accumulated over a period of time and has become part of the standards of living. Now, this is a very crucial point because as donors and as volunteers, we believe that these sort of standards of living are a huge issue. It's unacceptable. But sometimes, it sometimes felt like we cared more about sustainability than they did. Because, hear me out, once the volunteers leave, and this sort of lifestyle is so integrated into the standards of living, that once the volunteers leave, it is so extremely difficult to integrate the changes into their daily lives. And once the aid runs out, then survival supersedes sustainability. And now, this is not a matter of who to blame. It's a matter of addressing that the issue exists. Now, this issue can be uh, addressed by a very simple monetarist economic concept called Milton Friedman's Four Way of Spending Money. Firstly, it's Christmas. Christmas is coming up. You're planning to buy yourself a gaming console with your own money. So you try to find the highest value gaming console for the smallest amount of money possible. So you economize and you seek the highest value. Let's say you're going to spend your own money to buy your friend a gaming console. Surely it's your money. You're going to try to save as much as of it you can, but you're not sure what gaming console is going to be the highest value for your friend. And thirdly, perhaps you ask your parents to buy you a gaming console for Christmas. You're 100% going to seek the highest value gaming console, but are you necessarily going to save money? Probably not. And last but most importantly, if you're going to spend someone else's money on someone else, you're probably not going to A, try to seek the highest value, and B, try to save money. And this is the greatest issue with aid, is that aid works in a way where governments, NGOs, and charities take donations and try to spend it on things that they think the recipients need or the recipients want. But more often than not, it might not be what the recipient needs or want. And this is one of the key issues of aid inefficiency. Now, I have to address a very obvious issue is when you're working in a developing nation, surely there are authorities that doesn't want light to be shine onto issues that are blatant in the regions that they're uh, responsible for. But that's quite obvious. 
uh, I want to talk about a little more nuanced issue that I learned about it in my English class, and it's called expiration dates. Now, what are expiration dates? We watched a film, Limbo, directed by Ben Sherrick, published in 2020, and although used in a slightly different context about asylum seekers, the quote went, Afghanistan, best before 2003, Sudan, best before 2006, Iraq, best before 2005. But oh wait, I thought they were rolling out the carpet for Syrians. Now, we have to remember that as donors, as volunteers, after we've made a donation, or after we've, quote, helped fix the issue, does not mean that the issue necessarily goes away. And then comes the guilt, the disappointment, and helplessness when you hear about it in the news over and over and over again. And once the news has reached its expiration date, then you move on with life. Now, does that make things inherently bad? No, there are very few people in the world that will devote their entire lives, or even a big part of their lives, for a singular cause. But we have to recognize that it is very difficult to work on a project to completion if the project itself has an expiration date before people subconsciously start finding it a nuisance. So, what is the solution? If there were a solution, I wouldn't be having the speech. But my solution is to have compassion without expectations. Surely, with the news of the pandemic and a rise in global conflicts around the world, we have to recognize that us human beings, one of the best traits we can display are very simple. Kindness, compassion, love for one another. And it goes without saying that you have to stay informed, you have to make a donation to reputable sources. But we have to also remember that next time you come across another disaster in the news, obviously your first thought is going to be, what does it mean for me in my future? But make sure that that thought is followed by what can I do to help those that it directly implicates? Thank you.